Hi guys, Mrs. Gatch here. This is a quick tutorial over how to do that multiplicity uh, cloning effect within Photoshop. If at any point you guys want to fast forward something, skip ahead or repeat something, you have this video here for yourself. If you have any questions, you are always more than welcome to email me, but also know that there are some very talented people in our class who can probably help you a lot better than I could. I look forward to seeing what pictures you guys uh, make. Let's get started. Hey guys, Mrs. Gatch here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do your multiplicity project um, using the photos that you guys took yesterday. If you don't have photos to do, um, you are welcome to download the ones that I have included on Google Classroom. So if we go into Google Classroom here, you guys open up graphic design, digital design. I actually have downloaded, I've actually have put all these photos here as well so you can download them and use them as well. So everyone will have something to turn in. Just make sure that you do have Photoshop downloaded. So what we'll start off is with when you open up Photoshop, you're gonna make sure you don't go File New. You're gonna go and hit Open. And you are going to open up the blank picture of your scene, okay? So that's gonna be the first photo that I took here, all right? We're gonna open it up and you're gonna find that over here on the right lower hand corner is where you're gonna have your layers. Your layers is what you are going, um, is basically where every single picture is going to show up. So we're gonna be working with our layers, we're gonna be working with the brush tool, and we're gonna be working here with a layer mask, all right? Um, the next step that is going to be is, you're going to bring in your all of the photos that you took um, in regards for your multiplicity. So I have them all here in Finder. I already have them selected. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag them on top of the picture, okay, of my background picture. Don't bring them up here because this will open them up all separately. Bring them down here and you're gonna see that each photo will open up as an X, like have an X over it. You just hit the return key, hit return, and then you're gonna see every picture is creating is a layer now. All right. It doesn't matter about the numbers. So if you look at where the eye is, if you just turn it off, you can then see what is next and how they're all going to work out, all right? So I have all of my pictures here. I'll turn the eye back on. And now the next thing that you're going to do is for each layer, you're going to add a layer mask. A layer mask, I like to call it, just say it looks like the flag of Japan, it's right there. So go to the next one, layer mask, layer mask, layer mask layer mask. You don't put one on the background because we don't need to be doing any kind of layer mask work with that. So with your layer mask, you're going to see that the color of it is white. So when we're going to be erasing, you have to make sure that the color is black. All right. You can see down here where your colors are. All right. A really easy way to switch toggle back and forth between black and white is by pressing the letter X. And if you see, if I press the letter X up here, um, you'll, it's, it'll erase, it'll go into black and white, easy to erase. You have to really make sure it's only black and white. Any other color will not do the erasing. We're going to be using the brush tool. And with the brush tool, you just want to make sure you have a nice soft round brush. Okay. That soft round brush will make the erasing just very subtle and more seamless. So we'll start with the top photo. I'm going to zoom in here a bit on myself, and then I'm going to start erasing. You don't have to, I like to be pretty specific on when I erase. I don't want to go all over the place or make it sloppy. Just take your time. To make your brush bigger or smaller, you can use the bra brackets key next to the letter P. So bracket open makes your brush smaller, bracket close makes it bigger. All right, so once I hear I've erased all of myself, I'm gonna go ahead, this is the magic, and you can also even like see down over here where it's all in black. I'm gonna do, this is very important, command I. And when I hit Command I, you're gonna see, ah, okay, the next person pops up. So you go on to the next layer mask directly below that, all right? Don't click on this photo, because if I do this, it'll, thank God this stopped it, but it'll write black on it. So I'm gonna be on my layer mask and I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase myself. I'm not sure I understand. Ah, that was my very creepy Apple watch doing that. Sorry, guys. All right. So I erase, erase, if I need to zoom in. And here you can see, oh, I actually brought in a bit of the other one. So if I go hit X and go to white, for some odd reason it erases. So then black, you just toggle, toggle back and forth between black and white and you'll see how these things start to work out. So I've erased myself sufficiently from this photo. I'm gonna hit Command I, there we go. Go to the next one, 
make sure I'm on black and I'm gonna erase away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, these next couple ones and just speed right through them. And then when we get to the last one, I'll talk to you about what to do when you're laying yourself. Okay, so this is something that I want you guys to notice. So if you see here on the picture below how I layered myself, that's the problem that when you do some layering, um, how it can affect uh, how you erase and how you add back. So the best piece of advice I can give you is that you're just going to have to toggle back and forth quite a bit between black and white in the various layers. And it's kind of almost like this trial and error where you go to a certain layer, you see what works, and you go come back to the other one, go to black, go to white, erase, bring back until you kind of have exactly what you want, okay? So if I go here, you can see the light changed when I took this photo, so I'll do Command I. And you see, I brought it back, but obviously here, this one right here on this layer is affecting this. So if I hit black, for some, um, this should bring me back a bit if I hit white. No, it's erasing me, so no. Nope. Gotta go to black. Let's go to this layer here. Let's see how white works out. So the white will bring my face back into this one. I need to go to where my feet are in this one. And so remember, so just see how that is all a bunch of trial and error. So you'll zoom in, make your brush bigger, smaller. I'm on this top layer right now. So that was what Ms. Catch was telling you about. If you're going to be doing that kind of uh, layering, you need to really make sure that you are aware of where you need to make those adjustments. That being said, if you're just like, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about that, this is kind of hard, you don't have to do it, okay? I gotta bring my face up here. Okay, I think we've actually got what works out. All right. Ah, I'll bring back some of my hair, get some of my face. I do not know why this part of my face is not showing up. Like that green there is driving me insane. That blue. Oh, there we go. All right, so I think in that first one I just took a bit too much away. Okay. So that one is basically the one that's going to cause the most issue, looks a little bit unnatural. If I didn't want it, I could just turn it off and I just have to make sure to adjust the rest of them. It's all about taking time and seeing what works and what doesn't work, okay? So once you guys are done with these photos, I'll bring my arm back, that would be great. Once you guys are done with making these photos, that looks so funny. Um, you're gonna go ahead and just quick export it as a JPEG or a PNG, and this is how you do it. You go to File, Export. You can do Export As, and when it opens it up, you have an option to export as a JPEG. And you'll see here with the format settings. So we have JPEG, PNG, um, or I sometimes people like to go File, Export, Quick Export as a PNG, and then that's what you're going to turn in, okay? Um, if your pictures are in Photoshop, I mean in Lightroom, if that's where you imported them, try to bring them onto your desktop by exporting them. That'll really help out in um, being able to bring them in because for some reason to bring in photos from Lightroom is not as easy into Photoshop as you would think, okay? That's what we'll be working on today. Please make sure you have that Photoshop downloaded and if you're not able to do this, just edit some of your alternative angle pictures and just kind of call it a day. On, hopefully on Thursday, we have better weather. Thanks, guys.